All right. Thanks, Maurice. It's uh, seven o'clock, and I'd like to welcome everybody to the uh, regular meeting of Kimberly City Council for Monday, March 13th, held here on the homelands of the Tanaha peoples. Maurice, uh, do we have any late items this evening? We have a couple on the agenda. Uh, there is a couple of uh, late items on the agenda. There is one more letter to add to the um, correspondence related to the development variance permit uh, for 841 Deron Drive. It's from Mr. Cole. Uh, we received it today at 510. Uh, so um, it's been printed uh, for your review and it's on your desk. All right, so we'll receive those letters with uh, item 2.1. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. And the other is the uh, uh, the budget uh, request for um, the gymnastics gymnastics club re uh, rebuild, and we'll put that uh, item number three under new business. Sounds good. Okay with that? Just before the check run. Okay. All right, uh, council. With those uh, modifications, could I have a mover to adopt? Thank you, Councillor Royer and Councillor McBain seconds. All those in favor? That motion is carried. Uh, just a check. So Councillor Dunnebach is away. He's not dialing in, correct? He has not. He's yeah, he's been away. So okay, just so everybody knows, we won't expect Kevin either online or uh, here this evening. Okay, next up, we have adoption of the minutes of the regular meeting held on February the 27th. Uh, mover, please. Councillor Roberts, thank you. And Councillor Karen seconds. Any opposed? Motion is carried. And receipt of the minutes of the special meeting of council held on March the 6th. Mover, please. Councillor Karen's, thank you. Councillor Royer seconds. All those in favor? Motion is carried. All right, uh, so first up tonight, we have uh, a public hearing uh, to go through, and this is with regard to um, uh, 2325 Warren Avenue, uh, which is the uh, the property just um, uh, just kind of one property away from uh, Top Crop down on Warren Avenue. So uh, bear with me here while I go through the statutory process for the public hearing. So we will be hearing submissions uh, by telephone uh, and by anyone in the gallery who wishes to speak on this this evening. If anyone is listening via the YouTube stream that would like to share comments on uh, these on this, these bylaws, the OCP and the zoning bylaw, uh, please call in now uh, to 800-741-7180. And when prompted, enter meeting number 2773-363-18. Four, four. When asked for a password, simply uh, enter the uh, hashtag or, or the uh, pound symbol. And once you're connected, you'll be able to hear the meeting, but will be muted on hold until it's your turn to speak. If you're listening to the live stream while on the phone, please uh, make sure uh, to mute, mute uh, or turn your volume down as the live stream uh, is not in 100% sync with the, uh, uh, with the, uh, the actual uh, meeting here. Uh, you may also know, uh, let us know that you like to speak by entering uh, star nine on your phone to raise your hand and you'll know when it's your turn to speak uh, when you hear that your microphone has been unmuted. We ask everyone for patience uh, during this uh, process. Um, it is a little bit on the cumbersome side, uh, so we're going to be moving fairly slowly to allow ample time for switching uh, between speakers. There is a minor delay, as I mentioned, uh, so please be aware. Uh, any person who believes that their interest in property is affected by the proposed bylaw will be given an opportunity to be heard and no one should uh, be discouraged or prevented from making their own views known. Members of council may ask questions uh, during your presentation for clarification. However, the main function of council uh, at this hearing is to listen. It is a hearing after all, and uh, the comments, uh, listening to the comments presented and uh, not to debate the merits of the proposed bylaw uh, or any of the comments that, uh, that have been presented. You'll be given five minutes for your presentation and I'll call for presentations three times before closing the hearing. Once the public hearing is closed, we will be dealing with this matter um, uh, in the, uh, further in the agenda uh, this evening. 
Thanks for cooperation and patience. Um, so without further ado, I will uh, hand it over to Troy to explain exactly what it is we're doing here with this by with these bylaws. Take it away, Troy. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> so the public hearing this evening is for, uh, as you mentioned, for two bylaws. Um, Proposed bylaws 2735 and 2736 will apply to the property at 2325 Warren Avenue. Uh, currently undeveloped property that was formerly used as a, a vehicle fuel station. A certificate of compliance has been issued certifying that the site has been satisfactorily remediated to the applicable contaminated sites regulations, standards and criteria. Bylaw 2735, which is amendment proposed number amendment, sorry, proposed amendment number six to the official community plan uh, will reclassify the land use designation of this property from residential to commercial. And bylaw 2736, which is proposed amendment number 163 to zoning bylaw 1850, will rezone the property from automotive, automotive commercial C3 to commercial C1. Um, and the proposed um, OCP and zoning amendments here are intended to accommodate the development of multi unit buildings on the property with preliminary plans showing two four unit residential buildings. All right, excellent. Thank you, Troy. Um, I believe we have received uh, two uh, submissions by letter, Maurice. Uh, could you confirm? That is correct. Yeah, two submissions received so far that okay. are attached to the staff report. Any other submissions other than those two? No other submissions. Okay, excellent. So council have um, have seen those submissions. They are part of the uh, part of the package. All right. So I will call the first time for uh, anyone to speak. Do we have anybody on the line, Maurice? We have nobody on the line. Is there anybody on in the gallery that would have comments? Mm -hmm. No. All right. I'll call a second time. I will call a third and final time for presentations. We only have four viewers, so and they've been there since the beginning. <laughs> who has not? Who have not dialed in? Um, okay, so uh, with no further submissions, uh, the public hearing uh, for the proposed bylaws twenty seven thirty five and twenty seven thirty six is now closed. Thanks everybody for uh, the patience in the statutory part of the uh, process. Get my agenda back. Okay, so uh, first up tonight, we will uh, deal with uh, what we have just been talking about. Uh, and first is the uh, official community plan amendment uh, bylaw 2735 uh, for, um, for. Uh, 2325 Warren Avenue and the motion on the floor is that council approve third reading the bylaw 2735 as noted in the agenda. Councilor Royer moves and uh, Councilor Karen seconds uh, discussion. Go ahead, Councilor Roberts. Pardon me, uh, Mr. Mayor. I think it behooves us to note that those who who uh, who did communicate with us have expressed their support for the proposed bylaw changes on that piece of property. Both of them have expressed that. All right, thank you for that, Councilor Roberts. Further counsel, call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. And next up is the um, the council uh, motion on the floor is that council approve third reading of bylaw 2736. Uh, which is the zoning bylaw associated with the other uh, previous OCP amendment. Could I have a mover, please? Councillor Royer, thank you. Councillor Roberts seconds. Further discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. All right, next up, we have the development variance permit for 841 Deer Run. And the motion on the floor is that council approve development variant, uh, variance permit uh, as outlined in the uh, staff report. Uh, could I have a mover, please? Councillor McBain moves and Councillor Karen seconds uh, discussion. Troy, can you lead us through uh, this one? Yes, I can. Th thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, so uh, this uh, initially was discussed at the previous meeting and Council uh, supported uh, moving forward with 
giving notice to adjacent property owners and residents um, and uh, staff followed that direction. And uh, as you can tell from the report and the, um, the late items that were received there at the start of the meeting, uh, we have been receiving some submissions on this, this particular proposal. Um, I think the count is now uh, 11 submissions overall. Uh, sorry, I think it's 12 submissions overall, 11, which are of concerns or, or in objection to the proposal and one letter of support. Um, and I would uh, just point out that the one letter of support is from the um, uh, the um, adjacent resident uh, that is uh, most directly impacted by the proposed variance. Uh, and as a reminder, this is uh, to relax the uh, minimum side setback for retaining wall uh, from two meters down to zero meters, uh, which is in uh, in behind, um, you know, down slope from the house under construction at 841 Duron Drive and, and uh, will join up with a, uh, a retaining wall uh, that is on the adjacent property, uh, which is supported. And obviously the uh, two owners there are, are working cooperatively to, uh, to achieve a mutual objective there. The other uh, letters of objection, um, uh, I think, are seems they're you know all related somehow, or um, or, or um, I think uh, you know supporting the position of the um, uh, property owner that has a two two doors down to the uh, to the north, eight forty nine Deer Run Drive, um, and you know I, I I guess I just caution council that um, you know it seems. Like they're they're not very directly impacted by the proposed uh, variance here. Uh, a number of them point out concerns about um, you know use of the variance process and how they feel that's bending the rules. Um, and I just I will remind council that that's I mean that's what the variance process is for. It's set out in legislation for uh, uh, to allow the ability for uh, uh, property owners and and um, to to propose relaxation of development requirements. Um, and it's you know council's role to to weigh the merits of those proposals and, and any feedback received. Uh, in this case, uh, staff uh, uh, does you know maintain our position to or our recommendation to uh, to approve the variance. Um, we think in in the uh, you know like I said, there's a mutual um, benefit to the two property owners and in, in directly impacted by it, and uh, helps with the. Uh, um, you know, enjoyment of their lots uh, in the future after after building is under construction or after building is completed. Um, the uh, the other property to the north there, um, they may very well be in someday with their own variance application uh, for a similar retaining wall. Um, you know, there, there's a number of lots on this street that have, have gone through the variance process for various reasons and various um, requests. Uh, not all of them for sure, but, um, you know, it is a bit of a challenging uh, Situation there with the, uh, the the sloping sloping lots and and just the uh, the varied terrain there. So uh, there's some creative solutions proposed from time to time, and those are dealt with uh, on a case by case basis with each application that comes forward. Um, so you know certainly council and staff aren't breaking any rules or or uh, you know stretching the law by going through this process. This is a, um, a very standard. Uh, uh, Process, I guess, to consider these kinds of requests. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. In case All right, excellent. Questions. Thanks for that, Troy. Uh, Councillor McBain. So, Troy, just to be clear for those who are listening, the two the two people most affected by this are are obviously both in support and and working together. The two landowners. Yeah. To to be clear, the the subject retaining wall is is between um, the applicant's property. Or well, it's it's straddling the property line between the applicant's property and the adjacent property, uh, which is we've received a letter of support from that owner. Right, and they're not prospective people who haven't moved here yet that have chosen to uh, send us letters. So yes or no? Uh, well, I don't know their their current location, I guess, but they're they're both uh, in the process of moving. Like right. one's one's home is under construction, and the other one is right. not as a as a variance approved, but but no building permit application yet. But I'm sure yeah. that's coming. I'm soon. making a point here. Yeah. Um, and 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 just another kind of yes or no. We're we're going through the same process as we would for any other variance in in any other part of town that, that we would do. Correct. Yeah, we you know we can't refuse an application, right. or we can't refuse to consider an application necessarily. I mean, we generally always uh, um, you know but accept those applications to 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 consider, and and then it's uh, you know, it is up to council to uh, decide whether it's, it warrants consideration, and then. Based on feedback and, and the analysis and staff recommendation, right. it's your uh, your role to make a decision on it. Yes, the process is the same. That's right. That's all I needed to know. Thanks, Councillor McGuire. 
Yeah, I just had a question for Troy around um, the purpose of having two meter setbacks for retaining walls. Um, I know that I live in Rotary Drive and every every home on Rotary Drive pretty much has a retaining wall on property line. Um, and I'm just curious if you have a history or just a reasoning behind that, that setback. And the second question I had was also uh, to Troy, just to know whether these retaining walls uh, are built to code. Yeah, so um, it's our understanding, well, we, we believe the intent of the two meter setback requirement for the retaining wall is um, to allow for, you know, I guess where there's a difference in grade at a property line, um, where you might have a like a large retaining wall to to uh, so so you're you're forcing a um, that large wall to kind of step back or be offset from the property line. Uh, in this particular location, the you know the the contour of the land. I mean, it certainly varies through each lot, but it but the general contour kind of parallels the the road. If you if you can so so it makes sense to kind of you know kind of that as as started here the the. The property owners to work together to kind of retain that and and uh, you know it affects how the like their use of the backyard if you will right or be the area behind the house um there still may be some you know depending on the retaining wall design some mobility or some need to kind of you know turn the wall back into the hillside and have it have uh, have a have a wall at the line so um that's that's you know part of why that that is there is to uh, to force some offset there um but uh, you know it, it you know it can make sense sometimes to have a line a wall that sort of straddles the line like that. Yeah, but in this case, it's perpendicular to the property line, the wall. Uh, uh, well, yeah, sorry, yeah, to the property line, yeah, it roughly parallels the road, although it's not, certainly not exact. But, um, and the second part of your question was sorry. Oh, uh, oh just uh, whether the walls were were built to code. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there, um, the, the the there was a uh, professional engineer design for the wall. And uh, you know, they're, they're, you know the, the information that we have from the field reviews and everything so far is that is that they're built to uh, to, the, to the design and the standard there. So, yeah. Thanks, Troy. I, they, I may have known the answers to those questions, but you're more qualified. So, <laughs> thank you, Councillor Roy. I'm just trying to understand the process myself, and um, I don't know why there are so many negative let letters coming in all at once. So. You know, I've been thinking about it all afternoon, and I'm just like you said, you have a, um, a uh, an engineer consultant, right? That uh, the two properties got together and decided to use the same one so that they could work together. Is that correct, uh, Troy? Yeah, I, I think they, um, they, in fact, they were uh, using the same builder and and uh, and you know design team, I guess, if you will, for, to to put it short. Yeah. Okay, so My other question is, okay, so you have a consultant. Is that um, consultant basically the reason why we're going to also approve the um, the permit? You're recommending that we we use you know the uh, zero meter rule because they we had a consultant. If we didn't have a consultant, it would not happen. Is that correct? The uh, involving the the uh, professional consultants would be required for the construction of the wall, not so much to apply for the variance, but, um, but it would be a requirement of, of, uh, submitting for that construction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just to clarify, cause I'm, yeah. you know, this is new to me and the, I yeah, just want to and, be crystal clear what I'm voting on. To, and maybe to further clarify, if I maybe understand your, your question there is, um, you know, we, we, well, we'd be less likely to recommend approval of the variance if we didn't know that the the wall was properly designed and constructed. I guess um, it's possible that we could still proceed and recommend of approve the variance, but require the the wall to be you know you know designed differently, constructed differently, repaired, whatever the situation might be. But uh, but uh, both 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 requirements need to to fit. They need to get approval for the variance, and they also need to have it properly designed and constructed. Yeah. Thank you for that, Troy. Council, go ahead, Sue. Thanks for the information, Troy. Really appreciate it. And so I'm just going to run through. So the recommendation is to relax the retaining setback requirements. So the retaining wall on 841 Deer Runway is permitted to join the existing retaining wall <clears throat> on the neighboring property on 845 Deer Runway. And the two 
neighboring landowners are in agreement, it doesn't seem to me that there's um, any apparent effect on anyone else, um, that this area is in steep land and it's not unusual that we would receive variance requests for this area. And uh, I, I have, I'm in full support. Thanks uh, for that, Councillor Karens. <clears throat> Councillor Roberts, go ahead. Uh, yes, I was just going to sort of, I'm a banker from by history here, so I've seen all kinds of survey certificates for mortgages and stuff over the past 30, 40 years. And I'll tell you, there's a huge number of variances in Kimberley. If you were to set down a, a nice little square prairie town, you'd have nice square little lots and everything would be set up just perfectly. But this town exists three miles long in a three, three block wide gap between a bunch of mountains and streams. And there's all kinds of drop offs. There's all kinds of unsettled land. There's land that you can't build on. There's land that's just nothing but rock. And so the variances are actually a requirement to keep things safe. And so the, the careful consideration that planning does before they even bring a, a variance to us for our consideration is it's way up there because nobody wants to lose their house down onto the highway. And, and I think that's the important piece. We can count on our staff to have done the appropriate research to see if this is appropriate to do, in addition to which they're also living by their charter that we're required to live by. Thanks for those comments, Councillor Roberts. Anything further? All right, hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? The motion is carried. Um, next up, uh, we have item 2.1, which is the uh, second. Make sure I, I think I lost my. Uh, Nope, I did. We dealt with that. What we need to do, though, is to receive the letters, um, you know, as per the uh, as per the late item. So if uh, I could have a mover to receive uh, Councillor Cairns, thank you. And Councillor McGuire seconds. All those in favor? That motion is carried. We good with that, Maurice? Okay, awesome. Next up under new business, we have the 2023 BC Winter Games Legacy Grant applications and voting period. And the motion on the floor is that council receive the, the, the Winter Games Legacy Grants voting process and timeline report for information. And further, that council complete the, uh, the voting spreadsheet by Monday, March the 20th, and provide their completed spreadsheet to the Manager of Community Development and Communications for final compilation uh, um, and inclusion on the March 27th uh, regular meeting agenda. It was a mouthful. Um, Councilor McGuire moves and Councilor Roberts seconds. Um, Pam, did you want to make any comments? Uh, I don't think so. We just brought this um, tonight just to make new council aware of this grant stream. Um, it's a lot less labor intensive than the previous one. So uh, if we could get it back by Monday, March 20th, that would be awesome. That sounds good. And <clears throat> just for. Pardon me, and just for um, public consumption, the amount of money that we're allocating here is relatively small. Um, it's just over $7,000, uh, but we have uh, two, four, six, about eight organizations that have applied for it. So we need to, uh, and it's oversubscribed. So we need to allocate on the basis of what we have. Okay, uh, call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion is carried. Next up, we have the Columbia Basin Trust Contribution Agreement for the Kimberly Bike Park Revitalization. And the motion on the floor is the Council authorize the CFO to execute the con contribution agreement uh, as, uh, as outlined in the uh, staff report, the agenda and the staff report. Uh, Councillor Royer moves and Councillor Robert seconds. Uh, discussion? Jim, do you want to? Yeah, just briefly speak to this. Just briefly, Mr. Mayor, um, I gave council a heads up on this at the special budget meeting held last Monday. Um, there's a project that's on the books in the capital program for uh, revitalization of the Kimberly Bike Park that's adjacent to the skate park. Columbia Basin Trust has generously agreed to fund $64,000 of the, the overall cost of that project. So this uh, staff report is just requesting authorization to execute the agreement that would allow those funds to flow. All right, excellent. Thank you, Jim. Uh, could I have uh, a mover, please? Councillor McBain moves and Councillor Royer seconds. Further discussion? 
Oh, did I do that already? Yeah. Oh, this is so important. So important. We got to make sure we double up. Okay, we'll call the question on that with previous mover and seconder. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. I should have been paying attention and what I was doing was going back to the uh, reconstruction of the uh, uh, the next item on the agenda, which is the reconstruction of the uh, gymnastics uh, club on Warren Avenue. And the motion on the floor is that council approve an increase of $84,509 to the previous approved budget for reconstruction of the gymnastics center. Um, and the purpose of this is to, con uh, to construct an insulated concrete form wall uh, for the ins uh, and for the insulation of rough ins to accommodate future uh, two heat pumps uh, in the facility. And further, that the budget increase be funded from the General Operating Capital Reserve. Mover, please. Councillor Roy, thank you. And Councillor Karen seconds. Discussion. Who's going to uh, just give us the go ahead, Jim? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, the resolution pretty much said it all there, but uh, Council has already set a budget of $1.142 million for reconstruction of the uh, the gymnastics club that was uh, lost to fire. Um, this budget request, um, as indicated in the resolution, would allow for the, the construction of a insulated concrete form wall, primarily an ICF wall. And the purpose of that is because the facility is being expanded. And due to the expansion beyond the original footprint, the building is being pushed closer to the, the house that's immediately adjacent to it. And that triggers a code requirement that the, the south wall be constructed of non-combustible combustible materials, uh, which wasn't accounted for in the original budget. So um, by approving this budget request, um, it would provide enough funds to, to undertake the construction of that wall. And the contractor also recommended uh, installing rough-ins to accommodate the future addition of, few, to, of two heat pumps in the facility at a cost of uh, 7,600 bucks, I believe. Yeah, 7670. Um, doing that rough in now, um, the, the cost is relatively minimal. If we were to do it after the facility cons is constructed, it would cost quite a bit more. Um, the contractor did quote a cost of $29,240 to install the heat pumps, which would provide air conditioning to that facility. We're rec not recommending that that be included um, in the budget at this point in time, but uh, that just by doing the rough in that, that is an option down the road. Right. Awesome. Thank you for that, Jim. Go ahead, Councillor. Um, so I got a couple of questions. First of all, thank you so much for letting, giving us heads up. Nobody likes surprises when it's over budget. That's one. And two, heat pumps. Thank you again. We're going to hit that target with zero emissions again. So it's great that uh, we're going in the right direction. Everything. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, the, the contract on this project is Tai. And as everybody knows, they're they're really energy conscious, and they they recommended uh, the provisioning for the heat pumps. Further counsel, hearing none, call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motions carried. Thanks, counsel. Thanks, Jim. Uh, next up, we have the uh, check run uh, in the amount of uh, four hundred and seventy three thousand one hundred and fifty seven dollars to be approved as paid. Councillor Roberts moves, and uh, Councillor Roy seconds. Anything, uh, any unroutine, non-routine items looks, anybody wants to point looks out? It's like we got away pretty cheap, although it was dated March the 8th, so we still have a few two days left to go. So it's all routine uh, so is what the one think. The one unroutine item was a, a, a trailer purchased uh, regarding a John, John Deere, uh, 25 or $12,225 for a trailer. That's, all right. That's a little off. Thanks, Sandra. Further counsel? Call the question. All those in favor? Motion is carried. All right, next up, uh, could I have a motion to receive the uh, 12 items that are part of correspondence? Councillor McBain moves and Councillor Roy seconds. Uh, anything that council wishes to uh, point out? Go ahead. I watched the um, solar power uh, video and um, I was quite impressed that we were on the map with the weather network, you know, across Canada. Um, if anybody hasn't seen it yet, please watch it. It's really good. It really puts Kimberly on the map. We are the leader, apparently, in picking solar panels in our community. Hey, the sun mine is the gift that keeps on giving. 
bottom line is it doesn't matter who owns it. Uh, the fact is it's ours. So uh, that's pretty awesome. Go ahead, Sandra. I thought you'd be interested to know that the gentleman that wrote us the letter who after reading it on the, on the network, his name is Len Hicks. He was a, a former dynamiter hockey player here. The Allen cup winner. <laughs> Thanks for that, Sandra. Um, I wanted to uh, point out item 1.9, the letter from uh, Sarah Jacklin, who's the executive director at Summit Community Services. Uh, they're having a, uh, um, I guess, more or less an open house, but an education center on early childhood education at um, at the uh, campus, the uh, uh, College of the Rockies campus here in Kimberley uh, on Wednesday night from 6 until 8. And uh, as you saw in the uh, the letter, they've asked for as many of us as possible to um, uh, to attend that meeting. Anything else, uh, Council? All right, hearing none. Uh, oh, go ahead, Sue. I'll just uh, yeah, I'll just point out too in that um, the letter from Summit Community Services around the nice to see those new childcare spaces are are funded, yeah. and that this session is um, is focused to um, potential staff. Exactly yeah. around uh, obtaining certification ECE information session, and then I just wanted to highlight um, as well 1.5 the the correspondence from the the uh, Marysville Lions Housing Society and uh, their uh, plans their their proposal to uh, look at expanding the Valley View Lodge, and that they had a meeting last Monday evening which I dropped into. Uh, they did have a, a couple of questions uh, in their their letter there, but uh, just wanted to raise that to to everyone's attention that uh, it's out there. Awesome, thank you for that. So, okay, we'll call the question on receipt. All those in favor? Motion is carried. Okay, next up we have a uh, uh, question period, uh, which is where members of the gallery and or folks that are watching online. Uh, can make uh, comments or ask questions of council as it relates to anything on the agenda this evening. Anybody in the public uh, who's been watching on YouTube can call in at the same number referenced earlier, which is 800-741-7180. Uh, and when, when asked, the meeting number is 2773-363-1844. So while we're waiting to see if anybody uh, is calling in, is there anybody here in the gallery this evening that would like uh, to make a comment? Yeah, go ahead. Um, my name's Sherry. I submitted a letter with regards to the industrial development on the bench land. And um, a, year, a few years back at the resolve of one of the council meetings here, um, a committee had been promised and started by Mr. Mayor um, to have top with tech and city um, just to keep conversations open about land that may be available on the other side of the highway, i.e. the dump side um, and not on the bench land side. Just wanted to make sure that stays front and center and, and remains an important part of communication with council and city residents, especially as I hear more from um, newer residents that come to town, the importance of the, the flatness of that area. It's like a tiny minute little piece of the big puzzle, but it's also an important one. And I just wanna make sure that we keep our conversations going about the industry there and or lack of it. And if there's contaminated lands and we're waiting for the certificate of compliance, then there could be also possibilities of certificate of compliance on annexed lands that we could bring into the city on the other side. So hopefully we can um, reestablish a committee at some point with so is in agreement of that kind of nature. But basically, thank you for taking my letter and hearing me out. Thank, yeah. Thanks for that, Sherry. Uh, just by way of brief update, um, the uh, conversations with tech have been ongoing. And in fact, um, you know, I think uh, I think between between tech and kind of what our vision for a business park up there is, we are very much in sync. Um, timelines are questionable at this point because it's very early days, but uh, the conversations are going very positive and I think we are, as I said, we're in sync with what we'd like to do with that uh, property on the uh, on the east side of uh, Jim Ogilvie Way. The tech side. Yeah, for sure. So stay tuned. We're making progress. Yeah, you bet. Okay, uh, anything further? 
we have anybody calling in? There is no caller on the lines. Okay, so uh, with that, um, we uh, will do a quick roundtable on uh, council items over the over the past uh, week or two weeks, I guess. Um, I'll pick on uh, you first, Woody, <laughs> since you were on vacation for almost all of it. Sure. Yeah. Huh. I'll keep it brief. <laughs> yeah. Are you getting that? Um, yeah, nothing major to report over the past couple of weeks. Sue. So I, I wanted to highlight, I, I noticed today the uh, Columbia Basin Trust is hosting their community dialogue and they have their schedule out and uh, that will be used to inform their management planning process. And in Kimberley, it's happening on April the 5th. So there's an open house and uh, and then the, the, the facilitated um, community dialogue is in uh, in the evening, but there are also uh, Zoom sessions that you can sign up for that are quite small groups. Uh, so limited to 10 people and so you can register online for those. Um, so it, it's a great opportunity. Um, I think this kind of was supposed to start before COVID and it, it got delayed. So now it's happening by, by two and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So long overdue and, and should be a great opportunity. Um, I think there's close to 30 sessions around the, the basin and, uh, and then the other item. Oh, well, I just wanted to mention, um, Sandra, Steve and I, we were at the, uh, local government leadership Academy and, and Mayor McCormick, um, last week and involved in some strategic planning all of us on our day so yeah it's been a busy busy week and and it was great to have that that time so yeah lots of good, lots of good learning so yeah, yeah that's it awesome. thanks thanks for that sue it has been a busy couple of weeks sandra thank you mr mayor <clears throat> it's uh interesting to go for a time and again to the uh leadership academy from the uh, government because you think, well, what could be different? What could change? The rules are the same. Well, it turns out I'm, I'm mistaken about that. All kinds of things have changed. All kinds of things have gotten better. All kinds of reporting out has changed. Uh, how, how we do things is more improved. And the best part is some of the best presenters in the world, whether they be legal people or communications people or PR people, whoever they are, they just do the best darn job at helping us get excited about our role and keeping us safe from ourselves so that we don't go off and do a whole bunch of crazy stuff that we're not supposed to be doing and it's always nice when they can give you examples of, of things like that so that you can kind of treat each other with so much respect that we can actually be productive moving forward so and I then strategic planning well that that's always a must do and we're moving quickly ahead with that that's always insightful as well it's interesting this time for me because we have more new people than we have old people on on the board this time, you know, on at, at, at council's table. So there's a whole bunch of new ideas and a whole bunch of different ways of presenting that is eye opening and and uh, going forward. It's going to be really exciting. So by old people, you mean veterans who who managed to succeed more than once at the election table. Thanks, Thanks for that clarification, Sandra. Stephen. I um, went to the Cayenne meeting on February 15th, uh, Youth Network, and uh, there's a lot of things going on with them right now. They've got the le leadership certificate program. Um, I'll tell you about the, the uh, digital um, display talk at the plaza. Um, she only had three members before she put advertising on that digital. Now she has 18 new kids. So that is working, just so everybody knows. Um, another one that really stood out at the meeting was um, partnerships with the grant projects. They're working with um, Bonnie Harvey of the uh, St. Mary's Band. They're starting to collaborate with um, the First Nation now, which is really awesome. Uh, they're painting, doing paintings together. Uh, they're visiting each other's places. It, it's, they're just like expanding exponentially, which uh, I think is awesome. Um, so that's it for the uh, youth. Track and feel is starting next month, if you can believe it. <laughs> so April 4th and April 6th, if the snow melts in time. And that's all I have to say. Thanks for that, Stephen. Jason. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, as far as the library committee, um, there was interviews last week for the new director position. 
Um, they're in the middle of the day, so I, I, I couldn't get away from my regular job to uh, to participate, but uh, spoke with our uh, president and, and it went well. And uh, we should hopefully um, within the next couple of weeks here, we can uh, we can make an announcement uh, uh, successful candidate. So um, some more to come on that. Um, I guess what I'll say about just kind of hacking on with strategic planning, um, what I find what I what I really enjoyed about it is um, we uh, you know as, as Sandra said it's a new council and you know we have uh, we have new ideas we have new um, uh, new energy I think you you can almost say but what what I do like is 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 folks are are not um, we we've, we've got broad we've got broader agendas and and I really appreciate that we're not a um, you know, we don't have any folks on council who've got narrow agendas or just focused on one thing. We're 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 focused we're focused broadly, and and I think that's really important for for people to understand. Um, I think, you know, there's been some discussion um, in town. Um, you know, with with certain things that are going on, and and you start to feel like there's um, different sects within town of you know of, of folks in different areas and. Um, you know, well, I'm from here and I think this way and I'm from here and I think this way, but we, we're all one big, we're all one town. Like, like Sandra said, it's a big, long, kind of a strange layout geographically, but we're all one town and we, um, we all have a, a broad vision for that. And I, and I really appreciate that. So I'm glad that people brought up the, that strategic planning and uh, just wanted to let the public know that, um, you know, we, I think we do have a good group and I think everybody is considered when we meet. Thanks for those comments, Jason. All right, <clears throat> pardon me. We do have it in camera this evening. Uh, so in order to facilitate that, I need a mover to uh, move in camera. Uh, Councillor McBain moves and Councillor McGuire seconds. All those in favor, the motion is carried. All right, thanks folks for uh, being here tonight. Thanks for the, uh, the few online uh, and those that over the course of the next week are going to uh, uh, be looking in on, on what we talked about tonight. Thank you.